Alright, we're live. Hello? Can everyone hear us okay? Oh, I forgot to switch my screen as well. There we go. <laughs> still still there trying we go. to get the hang of this guy. Hey, hey, hey. Well, Hello? Really, really exciting to see that we already have a few people waiting for us uh, in the chat. And so we'd like to just say welcome to our first pilot episode that we're doing for the drawing table. And I'm Jordan Tuffin. And I'm Ken Dermadi. Uh, but yeah, uh. <laughs> it's great to actually finally be able to start this podcast. Uh, we, it's actually been an idea that Ken and I, um, that we've been entertaining around two years ago, actually. Ah, can't you hear my voice? Oh, sorry. Just gonna adjust my volume a little bit. Yeah, so glad to see that you're all here in the chat. Uh, how's the volume now? Is it any better? Well, in any case, well, it seems like Ken is also frozen as well. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, well, in any case, I guess I'll solo the podcast for now. So, yeah, Ken's just going to restart his Twitch right now. We're actually in a call over Discord, which is why I can still hear him. And Ah, there we go. It's back now. So, yeah, uh, Great. we actually first came up with the idea for this podcast around two years ago when we were walking back from a uh, art community meetup that Ken and I host back in Jakarta. And we just thought it would be a really great opportunity for us to share our passion for art and also in sharing with other people what we have been so blessed and fortunate to learn from other people. And well, here we are today. Yeah, well, and the thing is as well, I think Ken and I have been quite inspired by listening to some of the things, uh, some of the pod other podcasts and other shows such as on YouTube that we've really enjoyed. And we, we tend to find that we enjoy the chill and casual vibe that some of them have. Because let's face it, on some days where I'm feeling quite tired and I just want to wind down and relax, I don't necessarily feel like listening to podcasts or shows where the hosts seem to be sitting up on the stage and they seem to be, well, in a way, lecturing us. And, well, that's not, that's not something that we would like for this podcast. So feel free to just ask questions at any time, guys, and we'll do our best to get to them. And um, so, as Ken mentioned, we will actually be doing, well, one topic that each episode will typically revolve around. And in the spirit of our first podcast, we're actually going to be doing it on the topic of starting out. 
so not only does that mean just starting out uh, in terms of how to start a new piece but also well how to start a new venture and a new project and I think that's something that Ken and I have been struggling with as well, even with starting up this podcast. I don't know about you, Ken, but <laughs> oh, I've been feeling quite, I've been feeling quite nervous about this, actually. And I've Yeah, uh, and well, one of the things that we actually started doing before the podcast was just coming up with all of the ideas of what we wanted to talk about. So I have my notes prepared over here, and what uh, we're going to be doing some sketching alongside of the conversations as well. So what Ken and I have decided to do is actually come up with a theme for us to do with a random word generator so so that we're not inclined to do something that we're already comfortable with and so you guys can have an idea of how we go through our process from the start yeah it seems to be the case I think someone else is also mentioning that in the chat I'll try to get Ken to restart the, uh, the stream. But yeah, as I was saying, we came up with a theme for Ken and I both, both to draw using a random word generator. And those three words are survivor, merchant, and dealer. So we're going to be taking you through how we approach an idea. And hopefully you guys will get something out of it as well. Let's see if Ken actually has... Nope, it looks like he's still frozen. So I guess I'll be soloing the podcast. Alright, so these are... I usually start off my pieces by doing a mind map. And in this case, I just thought about all of the different words that came to mind when thinking of the word survivor. And I started thinking about, okay, so if there are survivors, it must mean that they are, they have survived something. And I began to just write down the things that came to my mind. So maybe they were survivors from a plane crash or a ship that has marooned uh, somewhere. And maybe the merchant or dealer built the wreckage, uh, built their shop from the wreckage. Or maybe it's a survivor from oppression and persecution. Although I'll be honest, that's not a topic that, or at least that's not an idea that really uh, struck a chord with me. So I didn't really expand on it too much. And another idea that I had was perhaps they're a survivor of a creature invasion. Or maybe there's a predator that suddenly popped out somewhere. And ravage an entire village and maybe the survivors decide to band together uh, fight fight them back and open up a shop somewhere that sells equipment or maybe things to uh, help them ward ward the predators away or perhaps a survivor of a bomb as well so I had the idea that maybe they they built a shelter somewhere and that's where they continue to do their business and seek refuge as well. So yeah, this is typically what I do. And yeah, disease as well, gladiator arena, maybe the last survivor, but that's not an idea that necessarily, I think can really suits the whole idea of having a merchant and a dealer with it. And after expanding on the terms of survivor, I just, decided to also explore what the word merchant com um, conjures up in my mind. So perhaps the merchant makes a makeshift shop 
because I think in certain situations, especially when you have the survivor surviving a crash, then they probably not have many solid materials that they can build with or make in a very professional or very sturdy manner. So maybe they make uh, make it out of the wreckage parts or even some of the materials that they find lying around, natural resources. So whether that be something that they hunt or harvest around the area. Let's see. Hey, there we go. Hey, I'm back. Weekend's back. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. All right, then. So you got to take a little bit of the load off of me right now. And yeah. I don't know how much you've heard, but I'm actually quite curious to also hear what ideas you've come up with for survivor, merchant, and dealer. Yeah, so as you can see from the mind map that I have, um, I think we started off quite similarly in terms of um, like getting <clears throat> keywords out of the three words that we chose, like survivor, merchant, and dealer, mm -hmm. and then branch off from that. And yeah, from my mind map, I just first started asking like, what kind of survivor is this person? Is this merchant? So I came up with like war, maybe survived war, hey, that's maybe survived. one of the things that I had as well. Yeah, I saw, I saw, yeah. And then maybe survived a plague or survived college or military some something like that uh, but in the end i chose war because it seems simpler and we don't have much time anyway for this episode so i went for something I see simpler you've even written down PTSD um, as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah um the idea started from that point and then i went to uh, PTSD, drugs, like maybe because this person has PTSD, um, is taking in meds, like, like, I don't know, pills, marijuana to ease, ease out his like, stress and uh, like tense, tension. Uh. Um, but but um, since he needs to be a dealer, I was thinking like maybe uh, to make more money for himself he started selling his medicines or his like marijuana his supposedly medicinal mario uh, marijuana right. to like people <clears throat> and then from that point on it started to become a cult like where he turns on like uh radios with like buddhism chants or even like um i don't know like he started learning like um psychology all that That's stuff really to start some sort of a cult <laughs> but yeah it it started off simple but then it got really weird quite fast uh, funnily uh, enough like as... one of the ideas that i've also had was that maybe there was a survivor from a ship that was carrying a lot of drugs such as opium so it's like a colonial ship and then it finds itself marooned uh, yeah. on an island and he's like or maybe a group of people are stuck on the island and they manage to make contact with some of the natives and they set up shop creating their shop from the wreckage of the ship and selling the opium mm. off to the natives <laughs> so that's, 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 that's uh, i think much. that's quite funny yeah i think that's one of the ideas that i could come up with because when you think of the word dealer well, i don't know about you but i mean i i think of shady things you know, like a guy in a trench mm. coat, just like, hey, hey, kid, want to buy some drugs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's actually one of my key, uh, keywords, shady. Oh, and, and run down. I don't know if we mentioned yeah. this, but we are doing this on architecture as well. So as cool as it would have been to have, you know, a person just doing all of this dealing or maybe like a creature or a vehicle, I tried to just make it something a little bit more uh, immobile i suppose and yeah maybe that mm -hmm. he could be selling alcohol so maybe it was like a plane that was carrying a shipment of alcohol and a dealer perhaps they they're also gambling some things away as well or dealer in exotic and illegal goods 
And I think that idea actually ties in quite well with uh, the creature invasion idea. So perhaps you have these giant creatures and these hunters have slain, or the survivor of the onslaught from these predators have managed to kill them off and build their shops out of the remnants of the creature. So the bones maybe uh, can be used as the main structure of the shop and the hide of the creature can be sold off or used as some of the building materials as well. And so, so you're gonna go with the fantasy route, I guess? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> because I have a little bit of a tendency towards that as well. I mean, I played a lot of yeah, RPG yeah. games growing up, and I mean, I'll, I'll have to say that that idea seems the most comfortable to me. Although, you can say it's not necessarily the most unique one. But yeah, uh, maybe it is a weapon shop. So I'm thinking of it in a JRPG kind of context. So you arrive in this area that's torn apart, and you'll notice this little, little hut that's made out of like bones and hide and you'll find some survivors inside that are selling you some things that can help you fight the predators off as well and that sounds really cool <laughs> yeah uh i think that could be a cool oh. idea yeah yeah oh and we also have to mention that we have this idea of uh, switching our sketches for the next episode oh, yeah. so i'll be doing jordan's thumbnail like refining his thumbnails well, he will be refining my thumbnails. I actually kind of forgot Sorry. about that. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I mean, it's an idea. We don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, in any case, yeah. Uh, yeah, those are actually the main ideas. It's, that I it's just my way of stealing your idea. All right, that's fine with me. And I guess that's my way of fixing <laughs> your terrible sketches then, Ken. <laughs> but yeah, in any case, okay. uh, this is how... I typically start off my creative process and it seems to be the case that Ken also starts off in a similar way too. So Hey Reza. Hello. Oh hey, hey. Good to have Welcome you here with us. But yeah, uh, if, okay. if any of you have questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the chat. We'd love to interact with you guys more as well. Cause Mm -hmm. Remember that this is not just us sitting on the stage giving you guys a lecture. We would like for you all to join us at the drawing, at the drawing table, table, which is why we went up with, uh, we ended up going with that name, is to give mm -hmm. that image of all of us sitting together at a cafe, perhaps drinking some nice coffee, having a chat about art, and having our sketchbooks out. Oh, and if yeah, any of I'm, you guys I'm, also want to join in uh, with sketching and using the same keywords that we come up with, then that will be really awesome. And you guys can send it over to us as well when you're done. And we'd love to see what you all come up with. Yeah. But yeah, uh, um, in any case, so I'm also curious, yeah, Ken, after the mind mapping uh -huh. process, what do you usually do? Um, usually, oh, usually I gather references and I've gathered a few references. Mm -hmm. uh, let me bring them up on Photoshop. Give it some time to load. Okay. So, uh, with this idea of this person, the survivor, creating some sort of a cult, uh -huh. I went with like a, like a gypsy uh, van truck kind of uh, image right, something right. a bit more realistic uh, and with the interior being um, just a bit more like mystical like you know when you know the image of going into some sort of like a fortune teller with like the purple uh, decorations the wallpapers and right yeah, we, that's the kind of we actually have image that downtown here in Newcastle. There's this gypsy van that just pulls up. Oh, have you ever went? <laughs> no, have you ever uh, went there? I, I honestly don't Not believe in that kind of stuff. And if they, yeah. if they claim to be able to predict people's 
teacher and even help them find their fortunes and success. I'm, I'm wondering why they're still stuck on the street in their gy- little gypsy van. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just me though. I mean, if, if any of you believe in that, well, more, more power to you, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, usually start looking for references right. and yeah, uh, before sketching, I try to find the cool aspects from um, the images that I find mm-hmm. and then maybe extract silhouettes from like a certain part that I like. Right. So you've actually just so, rounded out, rounded down your I- your mind map to one idea that you're going forward with. Yeah. Right. I, see. I mean, I mean, in if it's like client work and maybe if the brief is more vague, then I'll probably do a few ideas, mm-hmm. sketch out a few ideas. But in this case, I kind of know what I want to do, so. Um, yeah, usually in this case, then I'll just find a cool shape and then extract it and make, <laughs> in this case, an architecture out of it. Right. So, for example, this hookah is very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I can probably extract the shape to make some sort of a, some sort of a tent mm-hmm. or a tarp. Yeah, that is a really cool shape, actually. I can see uh, an architecture being built around that design language. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, this sphere tapering off Mm -hmm. or out. Like, I can use that to make a shape. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be one-to-one. For example, this can be like the roof. Oh, man. But yeah, I'm, uh, actually, I'm not sure because I want to do it to do something more realistic. Mm-hmm. So maybe if I follow this shape too much, it will become more fantasy. So I'm not sure. We'll see how it yeah. goes. Uh, yeah. What about you? I mean, that's the thing, right? At least with the exploration stage, it is actually where you uh, try out different ideas. And even if it is crazy, then so be it. Especially if you're doing work for a client, I'm sure that, well, at least I typically present an option of something that's a little bit more safe towards another spectrum of crazier designs. And usually mm-hmm. what the client and I end up settling for is somewhere in the middle. And well, when it comes to my process, I'm definitely no exception as well. I also ended up looking for reference next. I tend not to like to go into my process without any reference uh, as I think that my mind in itself is quite limited. I might have this cool image or vague image in my mind, but I don't think I can ever replicate or do better than an idea or a concept that has been refined over centuries or even millions and billions of years by mother nature. So in any case, here are the reference images that I came up with actually. So I decided to go forward with the idea of the survivors against the predators. So most of my reference has been built around that. And I will admit, I. I really do like the idea of the ship survivors being stranded on an island and selling opium to the natives. So I did (laughs) have a small section or a few reference images that could revolve around that idea. So yeah, uh, this is what I have. And I also personally recommend this to you, Ken, is to (laughs) reorganize your reference using Pure Ref. Because... No, I, tr- oh, I tried. I tried using just for uh, for those know. of you that don't use pure ref. I mean, I consider myself to be a pure ref evangelist, where I usually go up to people in my work and <laughs> and tell them about the good news of pure ref. But this kind see, uh, yeah, 
the the thing is, URF can only open one time. If I open my URF, I can make several windows, and then, for example, I open three windows and I mm -hmm. arrange them. So this one will be my uh, like drawing canvas. This one will be like my main reference, and this one is like the secondary reference. Uh, See how it, it you feels can more. Do that with PRF actually. I don't know. You can have multiple windows. Really? So. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do it properly sometimes. But no, not to rant Just don't too long about PRF. Uh, we're actually going to be getting into the sketching stage right about now. And before we forget as well, we did actually write some other conversation points other than. Our creative process and while we're doing our sketching I think it'll be a good idea for us to uh, discuss some of these issues actually yeah so let me just um, bring up a new canvas first for myself uh, and since the topic today is about starting out all of our questions will revolve around starting out and different aspects of life and art. Mm -hmm. uh, just give me a moment. I'm going to find uh, where my pure ref, my actual pure ref is. There we go. And just open up a new canvas. But yeah, for you, those of you that are watching right now, uh, do let us know if the sound is all right. So hopefully we we'll have started sketching. Uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna do that right now. So I'm just opening an A4 board right now and have my pure ref here ready. So yeah. I think in my sketch, I want to make the setting um, in some kind of abandoned hospital. Right. Um, that's where all these like, call go to get some marijuana and to listen to s speeches about I don't know about war stories maybe sure. from the guy since he's like a military veteran mm -hmm. I don't know Could very well he deals out. out drugs I just gotta pull out my favorite brush something I've been using a lot lately Ah. Um, they say that your mic is a bit muffled. Right. Uh, I'll have to invest in a proper, uh, proper recording equipment soon. But hopefully, by at least bringing my webcam a bit closer, that you guys will be able to hear me. Although it's, it's much better. a little bit of an awkward angle right now, but it's okay. <laughs> We're not here for my face. Or maybe some of you are, but <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit finicky. Yeah, if, yeah. If you guys have any questions or any comments, or if you guys just want to chat about starting out, uh, feel free to mention it. Yeah, chat. I'm just using a very simple uh, Logitech, I think, Logitech webcam, but I'll definitely invest in a proper one soon. So don't worry about that, guys. Yeah, just starting I'm things. Using. Simple. My, my MacBook webcam. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, if, if, if we are to go on to our main uh, topic for our conversation today, which is starting off, I'd like to first ask you, Ken. Usually starting sure. off is actually one of the things that people often find to be most difficult and it's definitely no exception for us when it comes to this podcast and many other things so what do you typically find to be the most difficult thing about starting off i think it's just the uh, starting out part <laughs> well yeah that <laughs> much that much we know but maybe there's something specific that's usually holding you back because I don't think it's necessarily starting off that usually holds us back. It's, it's usually a few the other fear. things. Yeah, fear I think is actually a really big component of yeah. it. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's probably my my biggest the biggest that holds me back from starting something on mm-hmm. like even for personal projects. Like I just usually think too much about the what ifs, the why, right. and that prevents me from creating from actually creating something new. Mm-hmm. That's probably the the biggest. Um, thing for me no, I mean so. I can definitely agree with that I think a lot of us can relate here when we say that we're often stuck in our own heads we t- yeah we usually tell ourselves all of these reasons why we can't do it and all these reasons why we we're not ready for it or how we don't have enough resources to get started So I guess for something that's a little bit more relatable to the both of us, Ken, like what were some of those specific things that you actually were worrying about when it came to starting this podcast, for example? Oh, honestly, um, it's nothing big, but just some, uh, I do have quite a bit of stage fright. So oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the things that I most afraid of from this podcast. Dude, no, I feel you. <laughs> I mean, I think I've loosened up a little bit more since the start of the podcast where I was tripping on my words a little bit more. I think it's just that adrenaline, you know, just pumping through me. That's making me all jittery. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but no, I think it's true. Uh, it's the same for me as well. When it comes to one-on-one conversations, I don't tend to have too much of a problem. It's usually the idea of standing in front of a bunch of people that I'm not necessarily interacting with or I can see their facial features that makes it a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. I guess you'll never really know what they're thinking and if what you're doing is captivating them. Yeah. Oh. Um, someone asked a question. Ah, right. Oh, Nick, how do you guys manage your daily time schedule? Uh, yeah, how do you guys manage your daily time schedule? I found that managing the time schedule is really difficult, especially after you're tired from school and part-time work. How do you do that, Jordan? Ah, okay, so I guess I'm the one going first. And hello, hello everyone. We can see a lot of very familiar names here. So recently, people that have joined us. It's really us, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting it's to have you guys join us. So recently, yeah, I'm, I'm, we've seen uh, Adi and then Coco. And then there's also Trisha that's joined Jen. as well, and Damas. And Jen, of course. Oh, it's, oh Trino is Trisha? Yes. Oh, awesome. Hello. I, I think. I could be wrong. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> Hey Yogi, hello. Yogi, hello. hello. So wow, good thing I'm we... really humbled by all of the people coming to see us live. <laughs> no, I mean for sure. I actually didn't expect the reception didn't expect the positive reception that we have gotten uh when we Don't shared you. the news that we will be starting this podcast actually. Yeah. And I will say, uh so uh in regards to starting out, it is one of those things when you realize that you have a lot of people supporting you that help push you through these fears that you have as well. Uh, but to <laughs> not to skip <laughs> over Nick's question. Oh, look, I guess we got a new follower, but I don't think I can see them. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'll have to fix that. <laughs> I'll have to fix that. Uh, I've just been trying. Cool. I've just been trying out new things <laughs> with, with with the Twitch. Uh, but to answer Buki's question, not to forget about that, is that how we usually manage our time schedule? Okay, so it's a little bit off of topic, uh, but we'll still answer it anyway. Uh, usually, how I manage it is, I start off my day. Actually, it's the night before where I write down a schedule or a to-do list for myself of what I need to do the next day because I tend to find if I leave that until the morning, 
I tend to be a little bit too groggy to uh, think about what I have to do. And it's, um, and it becomes a bit overwhelming for me to do that. So I do that when I'm still a little bit more awake and I don't have that pressure of, oh, I have to get my day started. And any time that I'm spending planning is, a, is time that I'm not spending doing something. So that's what I usually do. And afterwards, let's just say on a weekend where I don't have a more structured schedule when it comes to work, I open up a Google Calendar and I actually create time blocks where I do those said things such as you know personal work, cleaning up, uh, preparing for the podcast. And I tend to find that, um, wait, let's see, where, what was I trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I tend to get a little bit lost in my own train of thought. Uh, oh, and I tend to find that it helps if you actually also do what is most difficult to you. Like maybe two of the most difficult things for you to do. And for me, on the weekend, it usually is cleaning up. I really would prefer not to do it. <laughs> and I think I've been quite... Yeah, I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> I've been quite <laughs> spoiled growing up in Jakarta, where my family has had the privilege of having me. You know, it just sometimes feels like a, a chore to get these uh, dishes done. And thank you to those who have followed recently. I can't really see it on my on my screen but we really appreciate it um, yeah. but getting those two things that are most difficult to you done as soon as you can I think gives you that little confidence boost to uh, to tell yourself that hey these two things were really difficult for me but I was still able to overcome them and it makes all the other tasks in the day a little bit easier to manage and not only that, everything uh, that is easier probably will not take much, uh, that much time or make you that anxious. And you actually enjoy the rest of your day more. So when I actually uh, start to do my personal work or when I start to watch YouTube or play some games, I don't feel any guilt anymore. So I guess you can say that all of this kind of ties back to the idea of starting off because you know, that's how I usually start off my day. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I'm going to pass the ball <laughs> over to Ken right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're rambling, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pass this on to Ken right now, actually. <laughs> I know, yeah, I tend yeah. to ramble a lot, so I'll have to catch myself. Or you'll have to catch me when I'm doing that. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, how do I manage my time schedule? I think a lot of my answers are very similar to Jordan. Uh, yeah, it's usually by the end of Friday, I map out a schedule for the next week using, uh, as Jordan mentioned, the time blocks method so I list out all of the things that I have to do next week the big things and then map them out on some kind of routine and then the advantage of using time blocks is that you it's very easy to keep track of what you're doing because previously I had this uh, I used some some kind of the, the typical schedule um, in spreadsheets so I just map out like per hour what I have to do but it wasn't very clear because there was no breaks and yeah there, there was no breaks. so mm -hmm. the thing that I do that helps the most is break each task and then have like a five 10 or 15 minute gap between each task so this you can catch your breath between those tasks so say you have to do this freelance work from uh, 1 to 5 break it up so it's 
from 1 to say 30 and then have a 15 minute break mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. do that uh, and then slot in another time block for the rest of right. the day That's... and if you're working it's more difficult but once you list out the things that you have to do for that day i think it's easier because then you can map map it out using a calendar app or something like that mm -hmm. I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Yuki. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree, Jen. Like, waking up in the morning is really, I think, something that takes a lot of willpower for <laughs> most people. Uh, just to follow the schedule. Mm. Actually, um, I can show on my OBS one second my schedule. Well, okay. <laughs> I think sleeping at 4 a.m. definitely makes it very difficult to wake up early. <laughs> um, but I think, um, I think moving forward, uh, I think it's great that you uh, people in the chat are asking questions, but let's just try and tie it a little bit back to the theme of uh, starting out but i think even damas's question ties it back to the theme as well of starting yeah. starting out uh yeah so with the time block method if you guys can see my screen uh, is it like uh, i think it's okay yeah, yeah yeah whoa what the hell so i have <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So as you can see, I wake up in the morning, then I set out time blocks, uh, then give breaks between each time block. And yeah, I'm currently taking... Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in. Nope. Ew. But yeah, since I'm currently... I currently have like a full-time contract, and then I have to do the podcast, and then also taking in a mentorship from learn square so it, my schedule is super packed but as you can see there's like gaps between the time blocks and that makes it easy for me to catch my breath and then to see what's next on my schedule and then <laughs> and then since you can also it's since it's also synced to my phone i can see it on my phone and then check the time and see if I'm, I'm missing the time slot. I'm not. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, not, <laughs> you're making some me, sensitive information. You're making me so. look bad, Ken. <laughs> my, <laughs> my Google <laughs> Calendar just looks so naked compared to yours. But funnily enough, I still have time blocks where I tell myself that I need to eat because that is something that can very easily that I can very easily forget. Yeah, that's actually a very good tip. Set up time for breaks. Yeah, and have uh, something consistent that you can do, uh, or at least something throughout all of your days that you do consistently, such as having lunch, or maybe what time you sleep. I think when you get used to that whole, whole routine, it will become a little bit easier to keep up that schedule so that's answering Damas's question and yeah. tying that back to the idea of starting off I think having a really strong goal also really helps you push through so if you are to start off a new schedule that you want to reinvent yourself you want to try out a new lifestyle I think what you really need to have in mind first is actually what kind of person you want to become and what things you want to accomplish it might be surprising, but uh, I think one of the things that people often don't do is actually ask themselves that question, which is, what do I actually want to do? And it might be, and people might have this vague notion in their mind of what they want to do, but until you actually tell someone about it or you write it down, I don't think that you really are able to sort through your thoughts properly. 
Oh, that's my thought that it is. But yeah, whew, I'm actually finding it a little bit difficult to come up with ideas for sketching while doing the talking and also <laughs> responding to the questions. <laughs> so this is something that yeah. I don't think we really thought through properly. <laughs> but in any case... I'm actually just sketching mindlessly. <laughs> Like, I have this thought, but I can't put it into my drawing. I know, like, I have these reference <laughs> images so on weird. my side as well. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's almost as if I'm mindlessly copying it as well. Um, <laughs> but in any case, um, hopefully this is actually communicating some sort of a casual vibe that you would be getting if you're sketching and chatting with friends at a cafe. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm actually quite curious as well. So this is going to be my attempt to try and interact with the audience more. Is, um, you know, what is typically some of the things that hold you back when starting out? Because, uh, you know, for Ken and I, one of the things is uh, yeah, just the fear. Well, at least personally speaking, I'm not sure if Ken said it, but it's just the fear of perfection such as not being able to hit the high standards that I put on myself or other people that have put on me. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite curious to hear what are some of the things that the people in the chat usually struggle with. Uh, all right. So what about you, Ken? Outside of stage fright, let's just say, out of outside of preparing for a podcast alone, what are some of the things that actually hold you back in general when it comes to starting out? Um, mm, mm. The biggest thing is fear. Personally. Well, I think you have to elaborate on that a little bit. No, I, I mentioned it. It's like thinking about the what ifs. Ah, right. That's uh, true. You did mention it. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, it, it just makes my. It just makes me unable to move. Mm. You know, so, but uh, the remedy that I find best for myself mm. is. Um, writing out notes about the goal, about, I don't know, about the project itself. Right. And from that on, uh, you make like a list of things that you have to do mm -hmm. step by step. And then that usually eases thing up. Mm, things up. I see, I see. So, what, yeah. So what, what do you usually oh. do when, when you have that, that the fear? It's quite similar actually. One of the things that I've been doing recently is just writing things down for myself. Um, is your notebook full of... Uh, oh yeah. Not notebook, sketchbook full of... Well, no, that's the thing. I've actually moved from my sketchbook. But I actually do keep a journal almost every day. And it's some place where I write down a lot of the things that I'm thinking through. And also a way for me to formulate some of the thoughts that I have because although I have some of these fears I think it's very easy for me to just uh, dwell on the feeling without identifying exactly why I'm so scared to start and for this podcast for example one of the things that I found to be particularly difficult uh, I've actually written it down somewhere oh, yeah. just for example uh, uh, let's actually, I'm not sure if I have it here. Oh, I have it right here actually. So it's it's just the general fear of failure. I think is that even when starting this podcast out, I'm not exactly sure if it'll work out. And what happens if when I start the podcast and I've done all this preparation that I suddenly get tongue tied? Or maybe the audience loses engagement with it and it doesn't turn out to be as big of a splash that we wanted to make with it. 
but then I come to realize that recently that how I uh, one thing to deal with that fear is the idea that it doesn't have to be perfect which is very difficult for me to say because I tend to be quite a perfectionist myself um, but I think one thing I've realized uh, being in this uh, in the industry for a couple of years and actually pursuing art more seriously is that things don't necessarily have to be perfect for you to start something like for example uh, when I first applied for the studio I'm currently working at uh, which is Adam Hawk Newcastle I thought that I didn't have what it takes that I had to be the best and one of uh, have an amazing portfolio before I would ap even apply for a studio because I was so afraid of the idea that a studio would come back to me and say sorry your work isn't good enough but at that moment I was actually quite desperate to get a job that I just said you know what what do I have to lose all I have to do is send it in and if even if they don't like my stuff and I don't get the job, it's completely fine. Life goes on, and I could probably even ask the studio what it is that is lacking in my work that will allow... Everything. Pardon? Everything. <laughs> well, as long as they tell me how, what exactly, <laughs> or how exactly that I could uh, improve it, then it's a good thing. <laughs> Have you ever actually gotten like a, a feedback for your portfolio? Like that was say you apply to a company and <laughs> then you get feedback from them? I'll be honest, the studios that I've applied to so far, I've had a, a hundred percent success rate. <laughs> so I can't say that I, I wow. so far. But uh, to be fair, that's like uh. two out of two. Two out of two. Um, but what I'm saying is that. Uh, it's not just when it comes to applying to studios, but a lot of other things as well. Is that even if it doesn't become perfect, you actually will, it will actually serve to help you improve because the only way that you can improve is to actually learn from your mistakes. And the only way for you to learn from those mistakes is to actually expose them in the first place there's only so much that we can do by listening from others but there's a point where we actually have to just take that dive for ourselves and experience it for ourselves i think it's very true for this podcast actually i think it would have been very easy for the both of us to just say that you know we're not ready yet and delay it even further yeah. Ooh, oh, oh man, I did go on another rant, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. What do, what do you have so far, Chen? Um. Okay, <laughs> so I'm mostly copying this image actually, but the idea is to have the the war pattern set up some sort of like mm -hmm. tent like his base his home base here mm -hmm. using scraps piles of scraps boxes and all that stuff and that's right. where he deals out his medicines and that is really nice whatever. I think <laughs> so I'm thinking that it could be covered in tarp mm -hmm. at in the morning so people don't suspect it I don't right know. Yeah. just it might be a little bit difficult that. to actually cover everything up it's okay <laughs> they don't really care <laughs> is it really that bad yeah, for you jen when you're starting <laughs> for at least writing those cover letters Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, I think 
I think it's pretty normal as well to to react in that way when you're feeling very nervous about something. Ah, I see. So, out of curiosity, how did you manage to deal with that? Was there any anything that you told yourself, or maybe a change in your mindset, uh, or maybe someone gave you some advice to help deal with that? Oh my God! I just honestly use a hard brown brush that's been flattened. It's been one of my favorite brushes recently, actually. Yeah. Um, using like a normal brush, brown brush with 20% flow and 10% smoothing. That's it. I think we're really basic people. Uh, right. So, what is the other five? I think I wouldn't do it like this. Right. So, it's kind of just. just forcing yourself in a way Yeah, uh, I do think that tends to be the case. Well, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I think that's the thing. Even if they do, let's just say, reject you, it's not like it's the end of things because they might actually remember uh, that you've applied with them before, haven't they? And they could see the improvement that you've done in your work. I only have these four quick sketches done, but the idea that I have is uh, maybe uh, the remnants of the giant creatures have been reappropriated, such as the bones and the hide, to create uh, almost like paleolithic kind of structures, something a little bit more tribal. Because that's something You're cheating. What? That looks like a piece. No. That you've done oh, before. okay, kind of. <laughs> But I'm yeah. trying to make it different. Okay. <laughs> ah. Ah, all right. I actually didn't know that we could actually. Oh, so in relation to what Jen is saying in the chat, I didn't know that we could actually resubmit every time. I thought there was a certain window of time that we could do it. I think that's what. That's not what she meant. I think she meant that. Can you? Submit one. Oh, whenever right. you're okay. ready. <laughs> that makes a little bit more sense. Oh, but wow, <laughs> there's actually a lot more points that I've written down that we haven't been able to get through, and time actually does yeah, fly. Yeah, actually, so. yeah, actually, want to ask you some questions myself. Yeah, well, I think it would be fair if you would do some of the talking as well, because I've been ranting a lot <laughs> and <laughs> probably the um, people watching this are starting to get a little bit tired of my voice probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah I uh, actually want to ask you about um, how do you start working out if you're a beginner people you know, working how out how do you build up strength since you're no. known as the muscle man far from it but <laughs> no but but it's a, it's a serious All question right. so i'll yeah. address your question and ken you can address damas's question after this but <laughs> so in this trying to tie it back to art and this podcast i think it's just the whole idea of starting small um and often let's just say in art even for a lot of seasoned professionals I think they, it's easy for them to get trapped in the certain mindset that whenever someone does something, you know, it's 
it's something that they were able to do quite effortlessly or the idea of talent that or if I'm not able to do it, it means that I'm just not talented enough and that guy is much more so. But I don't think that that is necessarily the case. I mean, I do believe in the concept of talent, but it's just that often people sabotage themselves with setting the bar and expectations way too high. So uh, when it comes to art for example they expect out of the door to be able to paint along along the likes of Craig Mullins, Juan Zia and all of those people you, you, you're rambling again <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so to answer that is that in, I don't think it's reasonable to expect that you can do that right out the door and the best thing to do is to actually just start small yeah, but uh, what I want to know is if you have any specific routines that you recommend, for example. Sure. Ten, I don't know, push-ups. Or <laughs> All right, sure. I mean... Like uh, building up the strength. Okay, so if we are going to go down that route, I think the important thing to do is to actually... Uh, yeah, just look it up on YouTube. That's actually what I've been doing all this time, and to do something that is manageable for you. So if you are unable to follow along with the workout, then just do the most that is suited uh, that you can in your capacity. And in time, I think you'll notice that you'll be able to increase the intensity and eventually perform a lot more complex moves or lift even heavier weights. And no, I don't do you... hire a personal trainer. <laughs> I just do it at home. Do you? Do you um, have breaks? For example, you do an intense workout for one day, and one day, and then you take a break for another day, and then do it again on the. That's the thing, though. I don't thing. actually. I don't actually. Uh, I don't actually work out that intensely because my main focus is on oh. art and I don't want to over exhaust myself since I usually do it at the start of the morning and no I don't have any gum road TPK for getting buff <laughs> I'm probably not the right person to ask for getting buff <laughs> oh that's TCK hello yes that is yeah but yes, TCK, your name is getting all around, going all around the world. <laughs> Dude, the stuff you do are really awesome. See, you have a fan right, right here. Yeah. Ooh, it's actually been an hour since we've started. <laughs> what? Yes, really? it has been. No, no way. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been an hour. Yeah. I think we should wrap Yeah, we can wrap it up. Well, soon. just to show you guys the sketches I've done, it's really not much at all. And I think <laughs> my friend Axel was right when he said that it would be difficult to split between having a conversation and sketching. So, yeah, this is all that I have trying to experiment with different structures uh, but it looks like Ken has been a lot more productive with his hands <laughs> and I've just been no. doing way too much talking it. That, uh, it's really tough you know because um, I do this morning this like every day I do sketches in the morning mm -hmm. and they're so much better than this oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for yeah. playing this podcast. <sighs> but uh, oh. there's a follow notification. <laughs> oh. Yes, definitely. We gotta spend more time. Thanks. I think it will come with yeah. my, like the, the ability to talk while talking. Yeah, or maybe we could have a s more serious, or at least one that revolves more around conversation and another podcast that revolves mm -hmm. around uh, a 
around sketching more. I can't even draw without talking. That's what Trisha said. <laughs> That's a very, <laughs> very enviable skill to have, I think. How long for a process to make <laughs> concept art? Okay, so when it comes to this question, it's actually some, it really depends on what piece you're working on. What do you think, Ken? I'll yeah, throw yeah. this question to you. Yeah, it really depends on the brief, the client, I mean, the style that they want. Um, and, and also like the scope of the image itself. So it's, there's a lot of variables, variables, yeah, variable. variables. Yeah, there's a lot of variables that comes into play when you ask this question. So if say if you're doing a prop for like a a, a stylized game, then that could be faster because you can because you can just draw like unique shapes and silhouettes. But say you have to do something more mechanical, um, like hardcore sci-fi stuff, then you can't just finish it in one day. I mean, maybe some people can, but it, as you can see, there's like a there's a lot of different variables that, as it comes into play with this question. Yeah. So it's not a simple question that can be answered with just one answer. But and I think yeah. it depends if you're working for a client or not, because if the client keeps on coming and, back yeah. with feedback, then it might stretch on just for the fact that they're very picky mm. so concept art yeah it's very difficult to define how long it will actually take <laughs> well this is an idea i quite like it's just the idea that maybe uh, the, the skull of a buffalo kind of creature will serve as the doorway and then the tent in itself is made out of the ribs maybe of another creature or even the same creature and there's lots of hides that are covering it yeah this one's quite a nice idea although really simple i would say and maybe mm. they add in a little bit of decoration like this. Uh, oh that's really cool Cool idea. This no, I don't think long. it can take. No, actually, it, that really depends, because um, uh, you know the the ship from Oblivion, the movie Oblivion. Um, hold on, let me bring it up. That actually took the designer. Damien Simon a year to polish and all he had to do was design the ship it is one awesome ship though. yeah very iconic floaty door Let's see if <laughs> well, that's good to know, Tisha. <laughs> I don't quite get what you mean, TCK, but hopefully this is something that is just draping down from here. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I have the idea of maybe uh, having the silhouette be better by having these uh, spikes jutting out. Which is quite characteristic yeah, really of high, cool. high tanks. Maybe they mix in some elements such as rock. And maybe they have some curtains. It's a little bit different. Okay. Thanks, Trisha. Here. Uh, <laughs> this is actually the first the, sketch that I've done thing? that I think is rather decent. <laughs> <laughs> the rest have just been like brain parts. Uh, but I think that's actually a good thing to note as well is that it's very normal that your first few sketches won't be the best. I don't know if that's the case in your experience, Ken. Um, really depends. Because oh. sometimes 
if I have a really clear idea of what I want to do, then the first sketch is usually uh, the one that I like most. Right. Cool, cool, cool. So, 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 so. Uh, for me, I think it's quite clear that I don't have a strong idea of what I want. Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps. You need to take some vitamins, some <laughs> juice. Yeah, I actually asked yeah, TCK the same question as well about sketching, and <laughs> he seems to be of, in agreement with you, Ken. What? That oh. when you have a strong idea, it's typically the first sketch that you end up going with. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it really depends on whether you have a strong idea in the beginning or not. Yeah. Hey, this is a nice question. Something something personal oh it's a secret <laughs> oh thank you so much <laughs> for following emery oh uh, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that was actually what happened I, uh, that ken was my senpai back in high school and i would always see him in the school corridor <laughs> and i would just cover my face with a locker when locker door whenever he passed by and it just so happened that one day we bumped into each other and I was carrying a huge stack <laughs> of books. And as we were both picking yeah. it up, our hands happened to just... Our hands touch. Our hands touch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there you go. That's our story. Or... No. Uh, another version that happened in another reality was that we actually met back in FGD. Yeah. <laughs> Please, no, no fan art of that. Not after the first episode, yeah. at least. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, we uh, we both actually met during FGD, and you want to tell us the crazy coincidence, Ken? Yeah, so the girl who's now my wife and then my girlfriend was actually, uh, what do you call What, childhood friend? Your childhood yeah. friend? Yeah, so Jordan's actually the childhood friend of my parents. And I didn't know that. And I was only told <laughs> that after I, I think when, when you graduated, right? No, the... The funny thing is, my mom actually was the one that pointed it out. <laughs> my mom tends to, oh, <laughs> tends to really tends to stop people on Facebook. So she was the oh. one that told me, "Hey, Ken, uh, he's actually going out with, you know, uh, your childhood friend." I was, I was like, "What? That's crazy." Yeah, and funny story about their childhood that since my wife has a brother uh, Jordan and her brother used to play Pokemon card I think together <laughs> but for some reason uh, Jordan cried because one of the Pokemon cards got uh, ripped or something yeah they told me that you cried oh my god because you got bullied we're, a lot by her brother. we're getting very personal here on the first episode <laughs> Casual conversation. <laughs> Cash talk. Yeah, deep. That's what I call deep conversation. <laughs> no idea which card, but as far as I know, I was probably uh, yeah. playing with playing with some cheap counterfeit cards that I bought from like the local midi mart. <laughs> I don't know, but um, you know, do you think we should uh get close to wrapping it up or? Maybe open up a Q and A session. I'm, well, we've kind of yeah, let's open we've up. We've kind of been doing it though. I don't know. I mean, we've been we've been answering questions. Not actually, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Drawing. Right. It looks like so pasta, yeah. Ken. Pasta, pasta. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Damas. Uh, we actually were not in the same batch, and. In reality, I was Ken Senpai. I was actually in the batch above him. 
Uh, but actually, out of curiosity, for those that are watching right now, would you like to see a little bit more sketching or talking more about the sketch or just keep up with the casual pace that it's been going at, I suppose? Because we're still trying to find our footing right now as well. We're not claiming to have, his, have this all figured out. Yeah, we don't really know the balance or if you guys prefer to have a more serious talk. So I have to do that too, I guess. Yeah. So something more like a podcast, like a, an actual yeah. podcast with useful information. <laughs> for <laughs> for podcast, expecting something a bit professional. Sorry to have had to have had that expectation dash. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very disappointed groan, Ken. <laughs> Wait, w when did you make my sticker, by the way? What? No, there's a sticker with my face. Uh, Is that my face? No. Oh, I didn't make it. No? That's so weird. Ah. Uh, no, that's not me. Helping. That's not me. Right. Okay. We can definitely do that. So maybe doing the whole concept thing first, or like sketching, and then having chill talk afterwards. So it's kind of split. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. That's that not me, Jen. Your... Oh, That's not oh, me. Oh, it's Max. It looks a lot like you, though. Yeah, it's, it says Max. I'm not Max. It looks a lot like you. <laughs> I mean, all Asians look the same, so <laughs> except Joey. For yourself, man. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said hey, except. Hey, Marco. So oh, glad you can join us. Been blessed by. <laughs> <laughs> they told me, I guess they never miss, huh? Sorry, that was a little random. <laughs> <laughs> Marco would get that though, but okay, that's actually a good idea is that we can actually split the concept and the art stuff at the start and then afterwards we can do the chill chat because I feel right now it's a little bit of an awkward mix between the two. <laughs> it's only awkward because no, scared. no, it's not. It's more about like, it's just that we're not focusing on anything particular right now. Yeah, they, they wouldn't notice if you didn't well, say they it. kind of pointed it out if you read the chat, then. <laughs> that they would prefer the concept stuff at the front. And then... Okay, yeah. I mean, that's a really good suggestion. And yeah, we really appreciate the input and feedback. Okay, we can do something about the emos. Yes, <laughs> it really is difficult to just properly sketch. But yes, for sure, next episode, we will have this much more structured and split the concept and process part with the chill, chill talk. But yeah, uh, so <laughs> since it's been a lot more chill, I think I'll just do a little bit more concept stuff now. So I'm looking at this concept right here, where it's it's a really cool, like Paleolithic era hut, and I really like the way that they rearrange the bones to form the exterior of the hut, and it looks like you can fashion a gateway out of all of the different kinds of bones. So maybe I can implement that and refine the shapes a little bit more so maybe it the rib cage can be these swooping shapes that direct it to the focal point at the start that's really nice i wish i had done something more fantasy wow well, you're actually gonna what be the one refining my thumbnail though no i don't know if we are we gonna yeah, do that you said we would so i don't think we should go back on that 
don't have to. I actually have three. I actually have ref up right now, Marco. I have pure ref up. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not freestyling. So I'll probably. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't want to make it too similar. It's very easy when you have a really cool piece of reference, I think, to uh, copy it one for one. So I'm not going to... Yeah. I'm going to do my best not to do that. Although I can't deny that this giant ribcage shape that is holding up the entrance is really cool. So maybe I can elaborate it where I have... Uh, extra items that are attached to it, maybe trinkets. That's really nice. So that's like the front door? Yeah, it can be the front door. I mean, I would like for it to be in the mouth of the cave, but it doesn't necessarily make for the most exciting uh, exterior, I suppose. So maybe I'll have to do something a bit crazier with the uh, silhouette. So if I have to do a big shape here, hmm. uh, give that a go. So maybe it's a little bit, got a little bit of a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A change in the vertical silhouette as well. And you link to your ref, Joy, of those bone houses look really cool. Uh, yeah, sure, I mean, I can, I'm not protective about my ref at all. I'll be more than happy to just link it somewhere, um, maybe on our social media or something like that. Uh, but I'm actually looking at a lot of, I'm looking at a lot of tribal stuff. And I don't think this is quite working out. The ref in itself is really cool. But I'm going to try now the shape of a more Viking longhouse. Like I'm going to pull up the ref I'm talking about. It looks like a Viking longhouse, but a more primitive form. So maybe what I can do is ins convert these wooden shapes into something that's a bit more bony, perhaps. That could be quite a cool idea. What about you, Ken? Uh, I'm, I've been doing a lot of the talking. <laughs> well, what, what are the oh. ideas that you've come up with so far? Um, actually struggling with the main shape of the building mm. at the moment. Because I want to make it look like a shack, but uh, it looks very generic at I the see. moment. But I'm currently building out the podium where he uh, hey. tells his war stories. And I think that's Sam. Sam hello. Hello. Chat. hello, hello. Yeah, that's Sam. Good to have you here, man. Hey, Sam. So you don't belong here. <laughs> so what were you saying, Ken? Sorry. Yeah. Um, I was building out the podium mm -hmm. uh, that the person uses to spread out his teaching or right. whatever. But yeah, I don't know if I should make the house that big. Mm. I think... So I do want to make it more personal, not less like a... I don't know. I don't know what... But make him... I don't know what era it is, but I'm going to create a quick snip of your concept. Is it like modern bus stop? Uh, yeah, it's modern here. I think if it's uh, that's supposed to be like a like a abandoned hospital right. where he built the, the shack. Like the thing is, if it is actually a bus stop, it could be really cool. Uh, where maybe this is going to be quite a big revamp of your concept. But what if this was an abandoned bus stop, right. and they act there was actually a bus there. Oh, that's cool. And then. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been carved out of the middle of the bus, the podium. So maybe that's the second story. That's and then the preacher is here. That's a good idea. Mm. Blood and thunder. And then maybe you see like some stairs that are curving up. So you want to really emphasize that ceremonial aspect 
and having a straight bunch of stairs feels quite mundane. But the moment you have curved stairs, I think it invokes the image of uh, like a grand mansion or something a little bit more uh, extravagant, I suppose. Yeah. So you can yeah, have like that. that idea. And then maybe, I don't know what can be on the side, but maybe some grim looking totem. And then maybe you have like a neon Ooh. sign on top that's like bus stop. <laughs> you know, maybe. <laughs> Maybe since it's an abandoned hospital, he can build build the like the podium on top of an ambulance, like an abandoned ambulance. Yeah, uh, I think that could work. So, could be something more different. Yeah, because what you really want to get with the focal point is something different, whereas this area previously was quite similar to what yeah. you had on the side. So it just didn't feel like it stood out enough. And thank you, Senpai. And Marco asked you a question actually regarding your process. Oh. oh, actually, my process keeps changing. <laughs> um, right now, I'm doing line work because I want to try to emulate my daily sketches, but it's not working out because I don't know. Sketching in Photoshop just feels different than sketching mm -hmm. pen and paper. So I'm usually with pen, I already have like a really, really clear idea of what I have in mind. But in this case, it's very, there's a lot of design thinking. So I kind of noodle around to get a good idea of the, the, the to get a good design of the idea that I have. Mm. Okay. So this, yeah. so uh, and there's another I, question as well, if I recall. And I think for the last, uh, we're gonna wrap it up soon, but we can just uh, take the time right now to fully answer some questions. So there's one more. Uh, Ken uh, Jordan, tell us your ups yeah, and downs yeah. story since you've been working in this industry for a long time. That's, that's going to be a long question to end the podcast on. But, you know, I will say, mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's definitely been a lot going on. But if I could just give you a shorter summary so that I don't go on for too long, is that. I think one of the most difficult parts for me was just getting started because for a long time I think I never really took anything seriously and going to FCD actually really changed me when I came to the realization after growing up in high school and being known as the artist that there were a lot of people better than me and going to FCD changed that and the next step from then was even proving to myself that I could work in the industry as well and being able to find a job that could help support me and my wife so uh, I think my one of my lowest points was actually not having a job and uh, not having a portfolio that I was happy with and those few months I really grinded away to get to you know, where I am now uh, sorry, that's a bit of a short version, but I uh, I'll pass it on to Ken for now. What's your ups? oh my up <laughs> right? So my up yes, yeah, just moving you here. I think the fact that I was I'm able to move here to Newcastle and work uh, with a bunch of very talented people and all around awesome friends is something that has been one of the highlights of my career so far. And of course, being able to collaborate with you, Ken, on a lot of different projects. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> there are no ups for Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. I hit one of my lowest points when I met Marco back in, during FVD and to realize that I'd be working with him again. So I think those were some of the biggest downs I had. <laughs> Thank you.
But yeah, Ken. <laughs> Your turn. Uh, and downs. Uh, I guess when I first started going freelance, I, I think I spent like one or one and a half months trying to find a job just to start out the freelance career. And yeah, that was probably the lowest point so far. Part. And the ups. Hmm. The ups. That's a tough question. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> the ups. Hmm. Maybe when the jobs start coming in, I don't, I don't know. That's that's such a bad answer. I'm sorry. No need to be so apologetic. Yeah. 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 I, I guess that's my answer. If I think of a better answer, I'll answer it in the next part. Mm. But yeah, I think we are gonna wrap it up very soon. Uh, it's actually been one and a half hour and gone on a little bit longer than we've expected. And yeah. just wanted to say, we really appreciate everyone that has stayed to watch the podcast or just tuned in near the end. Uh, because you know, it's yeah, it's been a very nerve-wracking process, I would say, for the both of us, even just to click that go live button. But I think as time went on, and having you guys here talking to us, cracking some jokes, it's really made it a very fun first podcast. And we just want to apologize for it. Don't so apologetic, David. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we will definitely take into consideration the feedback that has been given so far and we hope that you guys will also join us for the next podcast and not only will we be doing this, we're planning to invite some guests onto the show so whether it'll be more of a conversation we have with them or to help out with some feedback sessions as well so that's probably going to be one of the things that we'll be doing next is to just have people send in their stuff and we'll be more than happy to look at it and share our thoughts. <laughs> oh, that's really awesome to hear, uh, Daniel. But, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, Ken, do you have any closing words you want to say? Yeah, uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm really humbled by all the people turning in today. Yeah, seriously, can't I can't put it into words by how much I'm <laughs> grateful for you guys for tuning in and just chatting on the chat, hopefully drawing with us. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's been so much fun. Um, we'll finish I don't know, these sketches probably on our own time or continue it on the next live stream. But in any case, yes, we, you will be seeing the end of these sketches. Uh, but yeah, with that said, thank you so much, guys, for joining us at the drawing table. We hope that you've enjoyed your time here with us, and we hope to see you on the next podcast. Hey, you should put your webcam up so it's... Oh. Not like you're looking down on them. <laughs> I can't help it. Either that or I have that really muffly voice. That wouldn't be a bad idea, Jen. We wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah, if you, ha if you have any recommendations when it comes to guests, we will do our best to accommodate to that. And who knows? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not looking down at you guys. But yes, maybe it'll be one of you guys that will be the next guest. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's going to be really exciting. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Podcast. Take care, everyone. And once again, thank you thank so you. much. And hope you guys have a good rest of the weekend. And take care.